Today, we're going to talk about the very beginning of the writing process. Like a lot of things in life, it's really important in writing to get off on the right foot, not only in order to end up with a product that's a high quality piece of writing that you can be proud of, but so that you can shape a writing experience that helps you to form habits and mentalities that let you know that writing is something you can confidently approach and that any writing assignment is something that you can tackle. So I want you to think about those moments when you've gotten writing prompts in the past. So let's just picture that a professor either hands you a piece of paper or sends something through the learning, learning management system that is a writing prompt for an essay that is due in seven or 10 or maybe even 14 or more days. What do you do that day when you get the writing prompt? Well, some writers take what we might call the duck and cover approach. So basically this approach says, that paper is not due until a week or two weeks from now, and I have all kinds of events and homeworks and tests and other things between now and then. So I'm not going to think about it right now. And the problem with that approach is that while the writer buries his or her head in the sand, that dark cloud starts to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And the writing assignment, which is really just a normal part of college life and something that the writer will easily be able to tackle becomes something much bigger and something much harder to deal with, a source of anxiety in the writer's mind. On the other hand, some other writers are skydivers, people who jump right in without a parachute. So these folks certainly are not procrastinators when they get their writing prompts, but often in the rush to get started, they can get off course and far afield from where the paper needs to end up. Luckily, there's another way. And so the approach that we're going to introduce you to is one that will help you get off to a speedy start, but also to maintain a path towards the kind of writing product that you want to end up producing. And the name of this strategy is called breaking down a writing assignment. So there are really two steps to this process. The first one is just we're going to open up a Google Doc. And in that Google Doc, we're going to copy and paste the assignment prompt right into our own Google Doc. And later, you're going to add your outline. You're going to add your draft into this very same doc underneath the writing prompt. This is a key strategy in order to stay organized during writing, to keep all of your materials in one place on your computer. This way, when you need to pull that prompt back out, you don't have to hunt for it. All you have to do is scroll up in the same document. After you've got your Google Doc set up, the next step is to walk carefully through the prompt. And it's best to not just look at it on screen, but actually to discuss it with someone. Ideally, a resource person who's used to looking at these kinds of things and analyzing them, but even discussing it with a friend or, or a classmate who's also going through the same resource for their purposes can be really helpful to you. And while you read the text, the reason that you've started a Google Doc is so you can make the prompt your own annotating it, highlighting it, and commenting on it. So breaking down a writing assignment, what are the goals? What is it that you're trying to do when you break down a prompt? Well, these five things are what you should come out of the process with, come out of that step with, which is you should have a basic understanding of assignment requirements. You should understand the central task, what it is you're supposed to do in this paper. You should begin to envision a basic structure for your essays. So beyond the intro, body, and conclusion, starting to think about what will be the focus of those body paragraphs. Because once you can envision a shape, even if it's just kind of an empty shape that doesn't have much content in it, when you start to envision in a shape for the essay, the essay becomes more doable, it's easier to move into the stages of the writing process and actually know that you've got not only enough, but the right kind of stuff to write about. So you'll need to identify any decisions you need to make, like about what your topic's going to be, for example. And more importantly, you need to formulate questions for your professor. So, you know, you, a writing prompt is an invitation to a conversation um, with your professor. It's not going to have every piece of information in it that you need in order to be successful. And so going through this process of breaking down the prompt is going to help you to begin your part of that conversation. So how do you go about breaking down a writing assignment prompt? Well. It's pretty simple. You're going to do two things. One is you're going to open your own Google Doc. And so I have a Google Doc opened up here on my computer. And you're going to, inside that new Google Doc, you're going to paste the text of the writing prompt. So I've already done that part here. And for me, it was pretty easy because I was working with a prompt that was already a Google Doc. So all I have to do is go to the File menu and make a copy. 
And so what's nice about making a copy or pasting into a Google Doc is the prompt really becomes yours there and you can manipulate the text, you can highlight it, you can annotate it, you can take notes within the text. And so I want to show you what the product of breaking down the assignment might look like. And so we're gonna walk through that document here after I've already annotated it and marked it up. So after you set up your Google Doc, that is essentially the next step to walk through the prompt to discuss it. And ideally you're discussing it with a friend or a resource person so that you're talking out loud and puzzling out loud about the prompt. And as you go, you're using the highlight feature, which is right here, um, to mark up the text. And you're also using the insert comment feature right here in order to add side comments onto the text. And so larger conversation, um, but make sure that when you're asking questions out loud, you're sort of recording those questions and the answers to them out here in comments in the margins. That helps you retain the information and what we call own the assignment. Essentially, the more you have command of that assignment and can remember what is called for there, the better the process is gonna go of you writing the essay. So let me walk you through this, which is a complete broken down assignment. So you'll note here that I've used two colors to highlight this assignment sheet and blue signals the um, inclusion of requirements. And so, you know, one kind of requirement that you want to note is due dates. And so up here at the top of this assignment sheet, I've got five different due dates. So what I notice is, oh, this is one paper, but there are really five steps to, um, to completing this assignment and I have to complete each of those steps on time. So I'm going to make myself a note out here in the margin to enter those due dates into my calendar. And I use Google Calendar for tracking my daily work. Whatever calendar you use, paper calendar or a Google Sheet, semester at a glance, whatever it is, whatever dates appear on your assignment sheet, very first step is to enter those into your calendar. Okay, so scrolling on down, um, I also highlighted in yellow just important words that I found, keywords that can be clues to what I might want to actually write in my essay. So your assignment sheet can be a great resource for identifying and developing the vocabulary you need in order to be able to write at the level as a called for in the assignment sheet. So when you see specialized terms used on the assignment sheet, that's a really good idea to record those specialized terms, to take note of those specialized terms, and then use them when you write the essay. That way there's a connection going on there between the course content and what you're writing. Most assignment sheets that you look at in college will have some kind of a section like this one labeled task. And that's essentially just a section where the professor sort of cuts to the chase and says, this is directly what you're supposed to do in this essay. So I'm gonna pay pretty close attention to this section and walk through it a little bit. So here's how it reads. A rhetorical analysis takes a close look at the strategies of persuasion, influence, and or motivation within a text. Write a 1,000 to 1,200 word, approximately three to four pages, double spaced rhetorical analysis of a recent video, PSA. So I'm actually gonna highlight PSA because that is another important special term that I need to make sure that I'm using in my essay. And I'm gonna stop here for a second and note a couple things. One is I found another really important assignment requirement here in the task section. So this speaks to the length of the essay. So whenever you find that, you wanna highlight that. And again, I've noted that with a comment out here to the side. So now I have a pretty strong understanding of what this essay is about. I am analyzing the strategies of persuasion that some PSA uses in trying to reach its audience. And a PSA stands for a public service announcement. So in this particular section, this is a certain genre of ad that students have been studying. And so a public service announcement is something like an ad that's not selling a product, but it's selling an idea. And that idea is most often for promoting the common good. So you may have seen something like an ad aimed at parents trying to teach parents how to talk to children about drug addiction. So that's a classic example of a PSA. Okay. So I'm analyzing how some PSA tries to persuade its audience of something. Okay, next sentence. And I've highlighted this sentence in green because this sentence is a really important one for being able to go, being able to go forward with the essay. So it reads, your essay should be anchored by a thesis that makes an argumentative claim about the PSA's purpose and the effectiveness of the rhetorical means used to achieve that purpose. So that's a sentence that I'd wanna spend some time really breaking down and discussing because it tells me exactly what I need to do in the essay. And I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute. 
So moving on down, I've noted some other requirements here about citations and formatting with highlighting and commenting. And then I've also noticed a choice that I have to make. So I have to make a decision about which PSA I am going to discuss in my essay. So that's also something that I would want to spend some time with whoever I was talking this through with, kind of talking about what might be a good topic for my rhetorical analysis. And you'll notice over here, hmm, I thought this through and I thought, well, I might analyze an ad that's promoting mask wearing during the COVID pandemic, just because that was a controversial issue in my community, in my state, about whether people should wear masks or not. So I'm kind of interested in the strategies that organizations use to, to try to promote that with the public. Okay, so in this particular assignment sheet, um, the professor actually provided a little bit of direction in the form of the introduction, a framework for the introduction, the body paragraphs, and the conclusion. And she gave a really nice list of questions. And so I just noted here, I would want to replace these questions eventually with answers regarding my specific PSA. And so that'd be really useful when it came time to make notes. So I just highlighted some of the questions that really spoke to me, that sort of helped me think through this uh, particular approach to looking at a PSA as a piece of rhetoric. Now you'll notice that I've got another green highlighted sentence here, and I'm just gonna add a note out to the side that this is sort of a template for a thesis for this essay. And this is not, was not here, it was something that I added. And I added it based on really my understanding after puzzling through this green go sentence up here. I was able to write a template or a fill in the blank sentence for what a thesis might look like for this essay. So here it is. In the PSA, and here I'd wanna have the ad names like wear your masks, save lives. Um, the sponsoring organization, so whoever it is, maybe the state of Indiana, attempts to persuade the audience that, and then I'd replace that with whatever the claim is that the ad is making. Um, using the rhetorical strategies of X, Y, and Z, this PSA effectively targets its intended audience. And then I describe the audience there. Okay, I can't really go further than that in developing a thesis at this point because I haven't chosen a PSA. Next, I want to start to envision what the actual essay is gonna look like. The more I can start to envision a shape for it, the easier it's going to be for me to fill that shape in with content. And this professor has very kindly provided some advice about what should be in the introduction, the body paragraphs, and the conclusion of the essay. So obviously my own outline is gonna be very much informed by that, but you will note that I've gone down below that suggested structure and really started to put all of that into my own words and develop my own understanding of the shape. It looks somewhat like what the professor has suggested, but it also starts to take a structure that really makes sense to me and uses the keywords that I feel most confident about using in my own vocabulary for this course. So I've got my intro here laid out with a question I'm gonna answer and I put my thesis template in here as well. And then I started to uh, think about what the order of the body paragraphs might be. So what made sense to me as far as moving from things that are outside of the text, like the audience and the purpose and the genre, to then actually digging into the rhetorical strategies and the design of the PSA. And so that's what you see here in these final three sections of the body. And then finally, um, just a reminder to myself about what I need to do in the conclusion. So how do we get to that? That's the part that you get to through discussion with your resource person that you're working with. But really thinking about, okay, how would I start this? What would be something that I'd wanna talk about in the beginning? And then what might make sense for the sequence of the body paragraphs? So the last thing that you want to make sure to accomplish as part of the assignment breakdown is to develop any questions that you might take to your professor about the assignment. And if you don't have questions for your professor, you're not thinking hard enough about the assignment. So notice over here, I've developed a few questions that I'm going to be taking back to the professor. So one of the things that the assignment says is that I need to evaluate the effectiveness of the ad that I'm analyzing. So a question that came into my head is, well, how do I prove that? How do I prove that the ad is or is not effective? That would be a great question to take back to the professor. Another question that I that occurred to me during breaking down this prompt is, can I use first person? Can I use the word I? Can I use my? And talk about my own experiences in this essay because I'm part of the larger public that this ad was trying to address most likely. So these are two questions that I think any professor would be really happy to get. They show your professor that you're well engaged with the essay and when you get answers for them, it builds your confidence that you can complete the assignment.
So there you have it. This is a go-to strategy, breaking down a writing assignment prompt for beginning a successful writing process for a college essay. After walking through that process, I better understand not only the assignment requirements, but the central task called for in the essay. If I run into a friend and they ask me what I'm working on, I'll be able to quickly say, oh, I've got a three to four page essay that I'm writing. It's a rhetorical analysis of a public service announcement, and I need to analyze the rhetorical strategies that the PSA uses to try to reach its audience. I also have a shape for my paper. I start to know what the parts of that paper are so that when I find my ad, I not only have some good thoughts about it as I watch the ad and make notes, I start to think about where those ideas might fall in the paper. I know I've got a decision to make right now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go back to that website where the PSAs are found and start shopping around for one that's gonna make for good content for my paper. And I'm actually kind of excited about that part. It should be fun to watch some of those PSAs and pick out the one that really appeals to me. And finally, I've got two good questions to take back to ask my professor. And all these steps add up to not only a solid start to the writing process, but also having answers to them is gonna help give me the confidence that I need in order to keep moving forward with this assignment and end up at the place that I wanna be. So that's it. I hope you have fun starting your own assignment breakdown and happy writing.